which is the planning advisory committee uh, business. So I, at this point, require a motion that the Tourism Active Advisory Board move into the planning advisory committee. Can I have someone move that motion, please? Councillor Martin, seconded by. Thank you, Chantel. All in favor? Carried. Thanks. Okay. Um, Brandon Sloan, General Manager of Community Development. Um, uh, thank you so much. We know you're a very busy man and uh, there's been some great progress uh, uh, in our, our community so far. And I know that the initial question that brought you here was really identifying the state of the planning department, looking at what resources are required, uh, your vision for it, what the current needs are. And then I think we have another discussion regarding a bridge into uh, seasonal housing and uh, some of the short-term rentals. So the, the floor is yours. Greetings and uh, nice to virtually uh, meet this uh, group and committee. Thanks for having me. I, uh, I, it would help me, I guess, if I knew in your capacity as this uh, planning advisory committee, and you just gave me a few points there. I uh, didn't necessarily have access to your agenda, um, but to make sure I touch on the points that need to touch on, if you could confirm and clarify um, exactly what you'd like me to touch on. So I, I've got identifying the state of the planning department, what the needs are and the vision, and is there anything else that uh, as part of the planning advisory committee mandate, um, uh, which I'm somewhat getting familiar with myself, I presume I am pretty sure that's related to uh, providing advice on planning policy initiatives and projects. Uh, when we're uh, I think it's forward. identifying resources as well. Um, I know that there have been comments regarding the length of time for the planning process. We understand the with COVID um, that no doubt there has uh, it has interfered with business as usual. Um, so just identifying uh, maybe the resources you currently have in place or you feel you is on your list to to uh, employ additional resources. OK, um, and then we have Helene's uh, piece here that she brought up regarding housing, if you want to. Well, there's that and then there's also just some of the other some of the planning um, things that were already underway, like a lot of work was put on the bridge over secondary plan and where that is because it got delayed for a while due to kind of staffing shortages. And so where the the, the existing projects that were going through the, the process yep. that may have got installed, where where are those at and how are they moving forward? OK, thank you. Yeah, I can touch on that um, just for clarity. Uh, about the questions of length of time for the process. Um, are you speaking about the development process and does the planning advisory committee involved in that? Just so that helps I think you. I, from, from what we have received comment on is that there are applications that start in the length and time of the processing is, is quite lengthy. Uh, for individuals who might be looking for development opportunities or processing um, might be due to a staff resource uh, shortage. And uh, I'm sorry for my uh, questions first. I want to make sure that we're on, yeah. on the points. So I wasn't familiar with exactly what we're uh, getting at with the mandate of your group. So does the planning advisory committee get involved in development applications or is that an economic development advisory committee? Because I guess you've got both roles, right? We we do. And uh, there were comments from even uh, from several committee members or s past stakeholders uh, who may not might not be here at the moment who had some general inquiries about the current state of the planning department regarding those resources available. Okay. Uh, we also have Councillor Martin who might want to make a couple of uh, comments on this. 
Thanks, uh, Madam Chair. I was just going to try and help bail you out a little bit there. I, I think, Brandon, the conversation, if I can recall at the last meeting, was heavily based on um, on planning staff resources and the pace at which and the reputation of which we um, continuously hear about the Norfolk County Planning Department. And we were kind of uh, reminded of what our terms of reference truly are in this planning capacity. And um, okay. it didn't, it wasn't specific to directing resources and that type of thing. Um, however, we kind of pushed back and tabled this motion requesting for you and or Al to come um, because the, I think some of the committee members, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but they were feeling like really unsure of what the role was in the planning committee capacity if you couldn't talk about resources and we couldn't make change to um, you know, provide input that was going to really find any practical solutions to where we were at. So in, from my understanding, I was kind of expecting you to come today and share about gaps in the department, resource needs, what we could be doing to better improve from a planning um, perspective that obviously is only going to benefit economic development and then um, give everyone a better understanding was kind of what I was mm -hmm. thinking where we jumped off, but anyone can correct me if I've missed something there. Okay, um, I guess then with uh, with respect and, and, and hearing that, my understanding of the planning advisory committee and then the role and, and mandate for the group is that it would be providing advice and comment um, when we're doing a planning project, I would say such as a Port Dover secondary plan or an official plan or perhaps the the, the housing study and the other uh, reports that are under the projects that are underway in terms of um, when Jennifer and Fabian, I guess would be the most recent examples, would come to the group to advise of the, the study underway, get your comments. And then sometimes that would happen again later on in the process prior to going to council with any kind of recommendation is uh, my understanding. So I, I don't know if it totally gets into the resource and other matters, but it definitely does have an impact um, the resources as to those projects. So uh, despite what the, 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 the full mandate is, how about I'll touch on a number of matters anyway, because it seems like you want to know. <laughs> So, the um, so I've been at the, the I started at the committee in July at the, at the county in July of 2020, and at the time, what was concluded is that the of the planners and uh, how about this? There was no formal director of planning at the time and there were no planners that had been there the year before and so from the planner's standpoint and and to the director of planning standpoint it was all new in 2020. there are other staff in the planning department that were there prior but you can imagine that that is a significant turnover and change and so that was one of the first orders of business that I had was to put in place a director of planning. And that's where it was firmed up with uh, Tricia Givens was our director. And uh, she helped hire and confirm uh, the various positions that were of need at the time. And so we've uh, got a good crew of folks. There have been uh, one or two changes over these last two years. Um, currently, our, uh, we're without a director of planning, so the director of planning moved on. Uh, she did come over from a housing role and an opportunity came up for her, her passion of housing uh, in another municipality. And so we've been without a director for many months. And so I've been helping out in that role since I have a planning background. And some of the other planning folks have uh, definitely stepped up. We are currently without a senior planner uh, that was primarily working on development files. And we have a, a pending retirement in one of our uh, frontline admin areas. And we have a temporary junior planner role 
that uh, hasn't been filled um, from the development side because we've done two things. So one thing that uh, we did that is germane, I guess, to the planning advisory committee is I worked with uh, Trisha when she was the director so that we could have a planning position that could focus on planning initiatives and projects. And so we shifted one of the roles when we did have a vacancy so that we could have someone that could work on a Port Dover secondary plan or to work on some of the downtown plans or the housing initiative or the short term short term rentals review, etc. And so when we did that and, and the person that's been fulfilling that role is Jennifer Caterino and you may have met her recently and what we also did uh, is we worked through a budget initiative and option uh, whereby instead of spending uh, lots of money hiring consultants, if we actually had somebody uh, in-house on a temporary basis, we could actually save money and we know our stuff well and could work on the initiatives and, and build that in-house and do that. And so we have a, an 18 month uh, position that has been helping with that project based uh, growth based work. Um, and that's Fabian. If, if it's OK to use names, I guess. And so they were the two individuals that, that, that came there. And so that gave some attention to the project based work uh, and others were working on the development. Uh, and by others, I mean two. There were two planners uh, and one of the senior planners has left for uh, another opportunity at another municipality in their hometown. And so we didn't, we only had one, one senior planner on development. And so over this uh, transition time, both Jennifer, Fabian and myself stepped in to help with the load for development. Uh, because at this time we are at also last year and this year i would say we're at the peak we we have like the highest amount of development that we've had uh, and that's the same with building permits and building last year was our record year of all time uh, and also in building is uh has challenges with resource and and full capacity has, has only been at full capacity last year for three weeks uh, in mm -hmm. building and, and in planning um we are not at full capacity in the year 2022. Um, a few other things then. So what that has done, we have not been able to prioritize some of the policy planning initiatives. So the Port Dover secondary plan has been to two statutory public meetings in addition to three rounds of engagement and the draft final plan of the, the the secondary document from the consultants went to a uh, committee last fall and we do want to bring it to completion we were targeting this spring uh, but it needs to be in its final form an actual amendment to the plan that is uh, delayed we're still targeting to complete that hopefully soon within the next few months uh, as much as Jennifer and myself can work on it a few of the other studies, so we're doing a, a, a land evaluation review of agricultural land. That's a little bit um, not a top priority right now, but it's ongoing and delayed. Industrial land review, growth management study. A few of these things are definitely a little bit delayed as we've pulled some of the, the policy work to development. That happens. Um, I guess if you're curious about development, so uh, in the vision and the actions, we have a work program. That was one of the things that we instituted. We have a business plan. And so for planning, uh, building, economic development, et cetera, we are doing a number of process reviews, number of improvements, and number of items on customer service and on communication. And so in planning, we started with the site plan and pre-consultation process. So we are currently instituting some changes to the site plan process right now is what we're targeting. Uh, last year, we targeted the zoning and official plan amendment process. 
and how we do our reports, how we do our presentations, how we do our public hearing committees. And I can report that in 2019, the average time frame was approximately five and a half months for a complete application to a decision on a zoning amendment. And in 2021, the average was less than four months. So we shaved off 50 days, over a month and a half of that process. And so far in 2022, we've carved off a few more weeks, uh, even faster. So that's even with the resource challenges. So there are ways through lean reviews that we can do this um, to a certain point. So our next step is site plans. After that, it's plans of subdivision and condos. As you can imagine, there is very limited time to work on changing every process that we have and enhancing everything that we do at the same time as uh, having the busiest that you've ever been and at about 50% of the resources in terms of the development planning side of things. So that's a little bit of a challenge. Um, there are a number of things that uh, are successful in that area and that we are wanting to do into the future. Um, I don't know if I would necessarily talk about uh, the full needs and resources. Obviously, throughout our corporation, there's a lot of needs uh, and resources currently in place. Hopefully, I've kind of described that. We do have a GIS group. Um, currently, there's a, a supervisor and two other individuals. We do have a development agreement coordinator as well, and we have a secretary treasurer for the Committee of Adjustment. And we're kind of evolving how we do our frontline uh, services in terms of uh, that position. I had over the last two months, four positions out there recruiting. As you can imagine, and what we're experiencing is a significant labor challenge and a highly competitive market that is adding to the challenges of recruiting and attracting individuals to Norfolk County. I did not, I hadn't seen it ever in my time, this need for development folks uh, out there, both planning, develop, uh, engineering, building. It's incredible that the amount of postings that are out there, the amount of development that's happening, the desire and the need, uh, some of the signing bonuses that are being talked about at other places, it's uh, become a significant challenge in addition to some of the other things. The other part about the process, just to make sure the group is well aware, is that the planning department quarterbacks it. They coordinate it. And you're only as fast, and whether that's on a project or on a development, as all of those that input to the process, which includes other departments such as engineering and the amount of engineering resource and priority that they can give to it or the conservation authority or other uh, departments and agencies and of course the whether consultants are involved or the applicants involved in the quality of the materials as well um, there's probably more we can get into but maybe i'll pause right there thank you brandon i know we have uh we have michael who would like to uh to have some discussion hi brandon um I think you answered actually most of my questions, but I, I know you mentioned building permits were at an all time high. Um, but how many build or how many planners are in the department currently? I know you talked about like senior planners, junior planners. So we currently, yep, currently in planning right now at different levels, there are four. There is a June, we have a junior planner who recently started, you know, less than less than a year. So we have a junior planner, we have a planner, and we have two senior planners. And so that would be handling the we get approximately 18 to 20 public inquiries per day. And we have, you know, all the applications that they would be handling and all the projects. That's currently our complement. And in comparison, what were we working with? in prior years when um, the numbers were lower? I 
is a good question in terms of prior to me being here. I mean, once we fill this other position, we would have five. So we we should have five. And um, plus we have a temporary one for for the next six months if we can fill it. So prior to that, I'd have to go back and find out the old org chart. <laughs> and you did say like the positions are posted basically that just it's. No one wants to fill them at this point. Uh, we're going through the recruitment process, so we've been, okay. uh, you know, reviewing candidates and interviews, etc. We just don't have anything to announce right now for any of those positions. So everybody's uh, doing their best, and you know, Councillor Martin and others have, have seen me at the uh, council meetings. Like I've, I've, I'm, I'm doing my own. I'm doing files too. I'm right. doing site plans and zoning reviews and uh, all those type of things to help pitch in uh, as the GM. I'm dusting off my skills from 15 years ago. <laughs> no, I'm just concerned if there was anything as a board that we could do or if we were short make or short number of workers or if there was been cutbacks. But because I see planning as being a huge asset to Norfolk County and maybe what's holding us back a little bit. But um, it's good to hear that they are trying to fill those vacancies. Mm -hmm. But you answer my other questions. So. Yep, and and thanks for that. I mean, I'm not necessarily here to advocate for anything. Um, there's a number of areas, of course, as I said, in the corporation and in the development area that uh, are having the same experiences. So it's it's really a, a broader item about are we um, staffed in the right areas appropriately for the future? Right. Are how are we competitive to others in terms of talent attraction and retention? And, uh, you know, what's what's our best approach uh, of moving forward? And the other part is, you know, I'll be honest, too, is is uh, we want to have a, a good workplace culture uh, strategy as well uh, to to confirm and, and show how Norfolk's a great place to work in terms of that talent attraction and retention. Yeah, my, my only concern was uh, obviously we want to re reduce red tape and that's keep going on about and make things faster for people. So I, don't, I if it's slowing us down, not having a number of vacancies, you know, that just could be something to look at in the future. But yep. Yeah. And through the group, there's a few things on that. So one, it's like all of the different uh, components that are part of the process, right? So yes, um, no, of course, if we had extra people in planning, that would help. But then what do you do when the engineers need to clear all the things? You can get to the draft approval, but you need engineering to review all mm -hmm. the drawings, clear all the things and get to the registrations. So what about that? And then into the building, you need the plans examiners and the inspectors. So what about that? Um, the other part is, so one we're working on is the lean reviews. So what can you do to streamline the process, lean things out? The other part is prioritization. What are things that you know, we used to do that we just can't do right now, given our situation. Um, and then the other one would, the other part of it, of course, is is resources. Okay, thanks, Brandon. I I wasn't aware that we actually should be referring to you as superhero Sloan. Um, <laughs> just learning about your efficiencies, Brandon, and uh, and how you have successfully navigated. Uh, through uh, rebuilding uh, this department is uh, is remarkable. So please know that our curiosity as volunteers uh, yeah. on this appointed, I believe this committee was appointed back in 2018 when the provincial government identified every municipality needed to have this mechanism in place. Um, so we were appointed that role. Um, we have okay. many new members who perhaps maybe we, as part of Aaron, part of maybe we could review that mandate, bring it over and, and maybe the June meeting, just review that as correspondence. Um, we, we just want to be efficient, supportive, uh, certainly bring, you know, yeah, some challenging questions forward, right, as to how we could help yep. uh, you navigate uh, the professional challenges that uh and, and celebrate the wins, right? Yeah. I appreciate that. Uh, maybe a few other things to add in. Uh, another thing that um, I wanted to bring in is a way that we can uh, better engage uh, the public and stakeholders. So pursued and, and 
received this grant to create our a new engagement platform for Norfolk County. So Engage Norfolk is what it's called and the growth management study, which is something that the planning advisory committee is being, uh, you know, going to for advice is one of the first things that we launched on that engagement platform. And so if you haven't seen it, check it out. It gives us a lot of new tools and, and techniques. So engagement and uh, communication was one of the big things uh, on my radar screen um, with our with our division. I mean, we also had a, a bit of a realignment and and how things happened and with our divi community development division and with the different departments. I mean, we wanted to focus on communication, customer service, efficiencies and productivity. Uh, and a number of other matters, including innovations. And and that's what Zvi and Chris do as well. Like they, they're at the forefront of that. Um, streamlining the processes, that was part of our economic recovery plan implementation. That was another grant that uh, I was able to help get. The province only gave us a few months to uh, spend that money. So I only was able to get the site plan process review before we had to return the rest of the money. So. <laughs> I'll uh, maybe that's something that if, if the group can advocate for some additional grants or funding or something like that or that to help us out. And that source would come from <coughs> Amy Martin, probably. Just if you see yeah, <laughs> if you see any other grants or anything that's out there for uh, helping with the planning and development process. So the 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 pro I'll be honest, the, the province put some money on the table about housing for the big 39 urban municipalities. Yeah. They put a little bit for municipal modernization program, which is what we took advantage of. But it, I was like, I, I was able to, I used about $10,000 mm -hmm. to help us out. So it's it doesn't really go far much. The other thing the province has done recently through Bill 109 has indicate that if you don't meet those timelines, you have to refund the money for a development application. And that is one of our sources for our resource staffing. Jeez. And so that adds an extra pinch if you have to refund money back and who knows what it could be. The applicant might just wait and provide updated information until the day before. Election um, year, so perhaps, uh, yeah, a hot topic. Uh, <laughs> so everyone that is on the wish list, so we, we do have a formal request. <laughs> yes, Jerry. Uh, Madam Chair, through you to Brandon, I was just uh, wondering, you're talking about lean processes. Uh, have you, uh, have you reached out to different uh i know you wanted to keep your amount of um, of costs down but uh there are there are people out there who are able to uh to bring uh, light and also training to your staff who uh, have serious many years of training in lean process management and what i'm talking about is uh is the multiple uh, people who have retired from Toyota, there are many of them that are consulting, uh, probably at a lower base, uh, lower pay than you would pay uh, a uh, big corporation. But uh, each one, I, I was, I was one of those retirees, and I'm not planning to offer my services because I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do that. But there are many people out there that have the ability to come into a, uh, a process management uh, system and identify. Uh, gaps and help you close those gaps so that uh, and, and most of it would be probably training and basically identifying uh, areas that uh, you may not may not uh, have seen before but uh, I, I don't know if you thought about bringing somebody in like that I could yep. probably get you some names if yep through the chair that's uh, exactly what we were doing so I previously worked at the uh, city of Kitchener for 20 years and over the last uh, year and a half, we were doing lean process reviews. Oh, very good. And we had people there and we were doing those efficiencies and had been through that. And so when I was here, uh, came here, then that's part of what we put into our work programs. We're doing these process reviews. So 
we've we had someone in for site plan process but mm -hmm. as i mentioned uh we were about to, we had to go through an rfp process in order to hire somebody and nice. there just wasn't the time in order to do that for the subdivisions and others however we uh i'm looking at if corporately we can still do some lean reviews uh, there may be an RFP coming out in the near future. So uh, if there are individuals that you know and they do happen to see that, then uh, they can go through the proper process. But exactly, I mean, Toyota is where it was born, right? That's where, yeah. you know, I'm familiar with Kaizans and, and all these type of things. So that's kind of what we're at. Right now we're just doing our own little Kaizans as we can to do those incremental little improvements. The other thing, if it's OK, I'm just going to mention this because uh, while, while we're discussing, I had an email pop up and it says positive feedback exclamation mark. And it's from an external uh, legal person that's involved in the planning items. And they just sent me a, an email that one of our senior planners has been a huge help with the projects. Thorough and fair response time and attentiveness is impressive, made a huge positive difference in their ability to get things done for their clients. Greatly appreciate it. Hope she's recognized for all their great efforts. So despite some of these challenges, I can tell you that that staff are stepping up. I mean, some of these folks, like they're there before I am and leave after I do as a GM, which is fairly impressive, but uh, we can only sustain that for so long is, is my worry. Yeah. Uh, I just I did want to say that I hope that it did not come like any of my comments or whatever did not come across the wrong way because for a uh, for a woman who introduced herself to us having already gone through the gauntlet of the planning process a couple times on other things before she joined she introduced herself to us as the dream killer uh, being uh -huh. Jen Cario. and I have to say that she is the nicest most helpful dream killer I've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> so definitely as much as um, I have a lot to say about kind of the planning department and the planning process, uh, overall I have nothing but admiration for you guys and what you have to go through and deal with and figure out with all the challenges put in front of you. So. Yeah, it's it's tough. I mean, sometimes in in planning and engineering world, you you have to say no, or that there's challenges, or there's kind of broader policies and and broader public interest to be adhered to. But we're trying to work on a bit of the culture that we are being problem solvers, and trying to look at you know proper options and things that we can do, or at least telling people upfront early on. Uh, we don't want people to waste too much time and money and going through a process just to find out something later on. We need folks to just, I'd rather people just tell you up front, know up front. So uh, we're, we're trying to work on that as well. And and like I said, we've we've got a good crew. They're, they're, they're gaining experience and we're getting there. We just need to uh, find ways to round it out and keep going. Brandon, was there any comment at all or Helene? I know there was an earlier discussion regarding the uh, diversity, seasonal use of perhaps some properties that are well, I guess located in designated farm uh, land or agriculture zone. Yeah, that was my suggestion early on is to participate in that process that is reviewing. And uh, otherwise, it's site specific for now. But yeah. if you participate, and then we will be investigating it. I think I was, uh, I don't know if I was turning the tide from the past. I know in the past there was challenges with that, and there was a lot of no's before. But I kind of was opening up the the possibilities of looking at it again. And and uh, there's there's you know the overnight accommodations was kind of a a big piece of it from our kind of economic development and tourism side of things to look at it. And uh, so it's something that uh, we're looking at. Helene? So sorry, just in on the, you know, the the, the processes that you're talking, uh, looking at this, because I know I participated in the ADU stuff and the short term rental stuff. Is there also an agricultural uh, something going on? Because as far as I understand it, though the the types of accommodations that brett would have on his farm or the ones that i had asked jen 
about us potentially building on our property just a couple of days ago. As far as I understand it, those do not fall under the kind of the you know ADUs or short term rentals. I think uh, we probably have to have more specifics or could discuss that offline uh, okay. and with Jennifer, but uh, the, the short term rental piece, if short term rental of bunk houses was a topic that could be identified through the short term rental review. So Helene, maybe you should follow up. Yeah, no, I will find it was, with, with it was most... and make sure that feedback was captured through the short term rental uh, Correct. survey. Correct. Yeah. Because yeah, that just, would be the, the space for it. And, and, um, and there'll okay, be yeah, more engagement later. Us. There'll yeah. be, sorry to interrupt, there'll be like once we, you know, look at all the feedback and start to put forward something to, to uh, uh, look at as options, then there'll be another round of engagement. Okay. Right. I, I mean, I'll, I guess I'll reach out to you separately because going back to the definition of bunkhouse being specifically for farmhouse workers. Or sorry, farm workers. I don't see how that overlaps with short-term rentals because I don't know how many specifically farm workers are looking for short-term rentals. So, anyways, I will. I'll, and maybe we'll have a separate conversation. And maybe it's a bridge that will be identified—a new bridge, right? Yeah. Any other comment on that, Brandon? Or additional information as part of your presentation tonight? Oh, just let me know if there's anything else to uh, clarify for that, that helps with your role. OK, any other questions from the committee? Comments? Okay. Well, thank you, Brandon. Um, I know that one thing that uh, Aaron has uh, acknowledged that uh, the mandate for the planning advisory board will be distributed to this committee. I think that will give us a better idea uh, as to how we can be positive and purposeful. Uh, to the planning leadership within our municipality. And congratulations again on all of the efforts and the efficiencies you've brought in. Um, and yes, uh, everyone, if you know of any resources regarding uh, grants, uh, okay, there was something, that's right, that's right, election year. And there are some campaigns right now regarding contacting your MPP, Tourism Matters, that's through TEO. So um, yeah, we can be ambassadors and uh, a positive resource for Brandon. So thank you for your time, Brandon. Uh, you are welcome to stay on for the remainder of the meeting. I will be bringing a motion forward. Um, so being said that, um, let us accept the presentation of Brandon Sloan, General Manager of Community Development, uh, be received as information. Looking for someone to move that. Jerry, seconded by Michael, all in favor? Carrie, thank you. So Brandon, uh, thank you for your time. You're welcome to stay. And uh, unless you have something time sensitive, such as dinner, family, um, <laughs> we understand. <laughs> <laughs> thanks thanks for having me and yeah i'll uh, continue to uh, listen to the rest of your agenda appreciate okay. it thank you thank you uh moving on we are at item seven so we are almost at the finish line uh general business and report 7.1 mm -hmm. councillor we just have a motion to move from the planning advisory committee oh to the yes very good thank you aaron keeping that pencil <laughs> sharp and that motion would be to move back to the Economic Development Advisory Board from the Planning Advisory Board. So we need that motion uh, from someone. Jerry, seconded by Chantel. All in favor? Carrie, thank you. <laughs> That's right. Okay, our duality. Now we're back in economic development. Number seven, 7.1, 7 Councillor Amy Martin regarding uh, Councillor Council Resolution Number 10, Year of the Garden. I was going to pass that torch over to Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good, right? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Councilor Martin. Through you, Madam Chair, to the board. As the board is aware, um, the Tourism and Economic Development Advisory Board is ultimately an advisory committee to council. So, although we all play a very important role in, you know, policy review and provide recommendations, often they are a recommendation body, and these all decisions that are made by this board need to go to council and get ratified at council. 
And the way that the first office has sort of done that procedurally is that the minutes that you we produce that I take at this meeting go before council. And if there's a particular motion that council wants to sort of action seek staff taken and, and turn that into action, the council will take that from the agenda and the council will vote on that. So at the April meeting, the April 19th of 2022 council meeting, Council Martin pulled the recommendation from the previous meeting, uh, Resolution 2 regarding the yearly garden, and it was passed by Council as their Resolution 10, which read that staff were requested to promote the year of the garden through the initiatives recommended by the year of the garden subcommittee and supported by staff as outlined in the work plan, and that applicable Norfolk County boards and committees be encouraged to promote the year of the garden, and further that communication staff be requested to develop electronic messaging to promote the year of the garden. So really, this is just an FYI for everyone on the board that this has been ratified. Um, I'm not exactly sure where we are at with um, sort of the promotions, but staff have taken that and we will be actioning that. So that's pretty much my update on Z wants to build upon that. Yes, I would love to. So sorry, uh, I was getting a message. Are we talking about Year of the Garden? Is that is that yes. what we're talking about? All right, cool. Uh, then I shall share my screen. Um, so, Aaron, what's next on the agenda? Is it economic development update? Yeah. yeah. After this? So I've got everything in the presentation. Can I just do it all together? So why don't we just receive and file this update? Sure. And then you can speak more in depth about other your item. Okay, so we can we can present the motion that the update by Councillor Martin as directed to Aaron Plant regarding Council Resolution Number 10, Year of the Garden, be received as information. I'll be looking for someone to move that motion. Chantel, seconded by Sarah. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. Excellent. And now we can move to uh, 7.2, which is uh, your update regarding economic development projects, ZV, which will also include the year of the garden. Indeed. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we've got a couple of things uh, in this list here that I'll go through. Um, if I don't cover anything in enough detail, because there is quite a bit, um, just write it down and ask me at the end and then I can get into more detail. But uh, just from a timing perspective, I'll uh, not spend a whole bunch of time on to, uh, on some of the items. So uh, jumping in, oh, is this the right one? No, this is not the right one, sorry. Uh, let me stop sharing just to get to the right presentation. There it is. All right. Perfect. Can everyone see? Yes. Yep. Okay, yes. perfect. All right, so we'll start with economic development projects underway. Uh, I think as most uh, most everyone on the committee knows, the, the grants were approved by council. Letters have been sent out and funding disbursement underway. And we've started um, uh, following up with the grants from the first round to um, to just see how those projects are growing. But uh, the, the second round grants are underway. Uh, Brink, the business resource uh, accelerator uh, project. So right now we've got two cohorts that have completed and have gone through the whole process. We're planning an event for May 31st to bring those two groups together and uh, basically pitch them on what other resources are available in the region and uh, connected ecosystems so that they know where they can go for funding, where they can go for mentorship, where they can go for additional courses. And at the same time, we'll also ask them, um, what would you like next from us? Which is part of kind of this brink model of driving the, the content based on what the community actually needs. So we'll be asking them what, what uh, workshops you'd like to see next, boot camps, uh, mentorship, uh, et cetera. So that'll be happening on May 31st. And then we're hoping to have an in-person event scheduled sometime in June. We haven't had any Brink in-person events. And so we'll, we're hoping to have one focused on various sources of funding, whether government funding, venture, uh, angel, loans, uh, venture Norfolk and other sources so that that'll be coming up and then our last cohort will begin in August that is the e-commerce rock stars cohort which uh, 
which um, is pretty exciting, and we're starting marketing on that very, very soon. Uh, industrial land promotion, so that uh, the, the project is still underway. We're still signing MOUs. It's taking longer than we had anticipated to get all of those MOUs signed. Uh, it's it's a legal process. It's a lengthy process. But once we have all of those MOUs signed, we we will start promoting our industrial lands, um, and uh, uh, we'll it, it'll be a fulsome promotion. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll start having one-on-one -on -one meetings, uh, site selector meetings, meetings with businesses and industrial businesses to try to attract them to Norfolk and fill these vacant industrial sites, whether for lease or or for purchase. Uh, workforce. So the workforce issues continue in Norfolk County as as they do everywhere else in 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 Ontario and maybe North America. Right now, as Chris mentioned, we're planning a bus tour of uh, newcomers. Uh, that'll be happening in June. It'll be mostly Ukrainians, folks with ver a variety of skills and skills that can be transferred into some of the roles that are available. And we're also currently doing an evaluation of Right Norfolk and whether Right Norfolk can be used as a solution to help uh, folks get to work. So some of the labor shortages might be resolved by helping people who aren't able to easily get to employment. Uh, uh, access that employment and maybe even from nearby communities. Can we use Right Norfolk to maybe help some of our businesses recruit from Brantford, which they want to do anyway because of the degree of shortages? So we are looking at Right Norfolk for, for that. Um, Shop Norfolk. So right now we uh, are developing a plan for growing the platform and we're working with a local marketing person to help us both on the end of the, the side of things of getting more vendors on board. We we want to. It's not just about the number, but the types of vendors. We want to have electronics and toys and some of those things that really bring people to e-commerce platforms, and will help us on the other side to really start um, increasing sales by putting together specialty days, coupons, um, you know, celebrations, baskets, etc. So. Uh, all of that is is underway. We are finding that gasoline and the cost of gas is is becoming a risk for the delivery services. I mean, the the cost of gas has doubled, as everyone knows, in the last year, and our delivery partner is is getting pretty uncomfortable with with those costs. So it's something we need to keep an eye on um, so that we don't lose really the only delivery option that we've been able to find that's viable in Norfolk County. Um, digital services squad. So I'm glad to inform everyone that DSS 4.0 has been approved. So we will be getting funding for two digital services squad members for a full year, and then we will have one digital services squad member for the second year. So basically two years of service. The first year will be two people. The second year will just be one person, but uh, it's exciting. They'll be in the community and there's new digital transformation grants that are available. And so that will be a big part of their focus, helping bring money into Norfolk County for those digital transformation projects uh, that that small businesses are looking at. Um, downtown Simcoe, so we are um, working on an initial work plan to put together uh, what we call downtown Simcoe reimagined. So it's a work plan that will uh, we'll, we'll engage in, we'll start with engagement and consultation, but really it's a work plan that is uh, focused on what are the top catalytic things that we can do to create the kind of change that we're looking for in downtown Simcoe over the, the next X number of years. It could be a five year time horizon or more likely a 10 year time horizon, but what are those catalytic things? What are those top three or four things that if we manage to, to change those things, it would create that that kind of knock on uh, impact that we're looking for. So that that uh, work planning is uh, is underway. And page down, my page down. Okay. Sorry, this isn't going anywhere. Okay. So tourism projects. So all of that was economic development on a tourism side. We applied over the weekend. Uh, we finalized over the weekend our tourism relief fund application. So this comes out, out of our uh, consultations that we did last year with the tourism uh, community, with stakeholders, and we asked them 
not just questions about brand and where should the brand go, but also where should Norfolk County be playing a role and how how do you want us to support you and what we heard from from the businesses. So, so we, we're looking for more tools. We're looking for for technology tools. We're looking for ways for businesses to promote each other, make recommendations, increase cross promotion and sales um, and uh, um, uh, couponing systems we heard. So that's what we put into this application. And uh, it's a hundred thousand dollar application, so hopefully we get it, and it, mm -hmm. some exciting stuff will come out of that. Um, our tourism awareness campaign, which I'll show you in a minute, this is launching this month. So this is a big campaign; it'll last about five months. Uh, it'll go through several different stages. Um, a wide range of promotions are included in this campaign, all focused on tourism and this idea of find your folk. There's also a secondary campaign called Close to Home, Far from Ordinary which we may or may not actually go live with. We may decide to focus all of the resources on find your folk because people already seem to like and gravitate towards find your folk. Um, but we will have, um, you know, point of entry ads, we'll have social ads, we'll have um, uh, programmatic ads, we'll have YouTube ads, we'll have YouTube videos, we'll have social content, we'll have um, even sponsored content, uh, in uh, the National Post and with a, with a national platform, uh, et cetera. So it'll be a pretty fulsome campaign. And I'll show you the, the first couple of ads today because we're not focused locally. We're using the Enveronics data that we did in de determining who our target segment should be. And we have very, very clear postal codes that we want to go after and measure the impact of that. So we might not even see any of those ads in Norfolk County at all. So I'll show you those today. Uh, social content, I, I, I touched on. We're working with somebody who is going to develop 250 pieces of content for us, as long as well as two long form videos and uh, 25 shorter, kind of those vertical TikTok style or real style uh, videos. So that will be coming out over the next five months uh, and helping us reestablish our social channels. Uh, I mentioned earlier the new tourism website. So we're just starting our process to, to get a vendor for our new tourism website, which we wanted to be bright and full of images and re really up to date with content and much, much richer experience than, than our current tourism site. Um, we've, we've also uh, uh, we, we booked uh, two days worth of photography with our partner at Swatsi. So this summer we'll be shooting at eight new locations because we're trying to develop an inventory of photographs and video. So stuff that we have ready to go for when we want to do future ads and social posting, et cetera. Um, other tourism stuff, uh, we, we have another uh, campaign going into Global Heroes called Kids Choice. It's a two day itinerary. It'll be going into the Globe, into the Post and into uh, the Toronto Star. Uh, Taste of Ontario Passport, that is live now. It's uh, 15 restaurants around Norfolk, where if you go to all of them, you're entered to win a prize. Day Tripping Magazine, we, we're, we're, uh, we're in that now. And we'll be in all of the Lighthouse Festival Theatre programs. And about half of the folks that come to Lighthouse uh, Festival are not from Norfolk. So from a tourism perspective, it's a great opportunity to promote uh, Visit Norfolk, the app, and, and other things that, that we might be doing from a tourism perspective. Um, okay, so staff reports. There'll be a staff report coming to council in June in regards to Project Microphone, and I wanted to consult with this group before I go on. Um, right now, we're, we will be recommending in that staff report not to proceed with 2022 Project Microphone. Obviously, we're in May already, where it's, it's way late, but really there's very good reason for, for not proceeding with 2022. The partnerships that we were anticipating really just did not work out in 2022 due to COVID and some other changes. And so we are recommending that we focus on a 2023 launch and that we carry over the funds from 2022 into 2023 and go big in 2023 uh, with a slightly different model, but basically why 2023? Well, it's the 10 year anniversary of Gentlemen of the Road, less risk from COVID-19, more folks will be comfortable coming out to the events. It's an opportunity to reevaluate our delivery model, which may be kind of constraining because conditions have changed. You know, the, the fair may not need the support that we originally thought that they, they may need or Old Town Hall. And so we might 
open ourselves up to a broader model with working with a broader uh, uh, partner group. Um, and then, of course, greater opportunities in 2024 sponsorship if 2023 does really well. So if we can pull off an amazing 2023 for Project Microphone, we are relatively certain that sponsors will come to the table in larger amounts in 2024. So that will be our recommendation to Council. Um, and so I'm happy to receive any feedback on that and, and whether TDAB is in support of that kind of move and, and moving basically funding from 2022 into 2023 and making it a, a bigger 2023. Members, any any comments, discussion you'd like to share with T? Jerry? Actually, I, I just have a question. Is there any risk of us uh, of you losing the funding for this year if you don't use it? Uh, certainly. So th that is up to council. A council could could at their discretion cancel project microphone entirely. Council could move some of the funding over, but not all of the funding. It is entirely up to council dis to council's discretion. Um, but the the reality is, 2022. As much as we try to make it happen, the model that was developed originally, which was working with not with our venue partners, the non for profit venue partners did not work out because those venue partners, because as I said of COVID, because of changes in management, they just weren't ready in 2022, but they are supportive of 2023. So okay. regardless, even if we do lose it, we lose it, but that's preferable than trying to do a, a poor job in 2022 uh, and, and, and really pulling off, not pulling it off properly. Makes sense. Helene? Uh, sorry, just it's one little thing that you just mentioned. The So is it, is it a requirement that your your partners be non for profit partners? Yes and no. So the original model, when I say uh, business or delivery model here, the original model was that Norfolk County would not be organizing any events. We don't have the staff or resources to to be event promoters or event organizers. And so what we wanted to do was to go to our non for profit venue partners and say. Uh, you know, County Fair, you already know what you're doing when it comes to doing events. What if we gave you some funding to de-risk putting on an additional event in, and help you in your recovery, get you some revenue because you're doing an additional event? What we would do is we would help with the marketing as, as staff and we would bundle with tourism. So we would create tickets that people could buy um, you know, to stay in Norfolk and enjoy the show or to go on a fishing excursion and enjoy the show. So we would bundle to maximize the benefit of Project Microphone. Um, that was the model. And if we're sponsors, if Norfolk County is a sponsor, we 100% can only work with non-for-profits because of the Municipal Act and what's known as sex, Section 106, which is the bonusing provision of the Municipal Act. If, however, Norfolk County becomes the event organizer and Norfolk County puts on the actual events, then we can outsource. We could do an RFP and outsource private sector, you know, service delivery. We can outsource musicians. We can outsource event organizers and, and you know, stage uh, uh, folks and all of that, that sort of thing. But what we can't do is sponsor private businesses. It, we can't, no, no public funds can go to a business um, that benefits one business over another business. That's not allowed. That seems very unfortunately limiting in terms of who you can work with on this. <laughs> yep, it, it is. Uh, yep, but it's the Municipal Act, right? So that's why looking at a different model might be an option or working with other non-for-profits that might take on the event themselves, but we are there on the RFP side of things, it, it's uh, it's it's challenging either way. Either we're constrained by what we can do because of the Municipal Act, or Norfolk County becomes an event organizer, and you know we don't have a team. We have a an events team that approves permits for others that want to do shows, but we don't have like you know in in Barry, I had a team of two staff that did nothing other than events, Winterfest and Kempenfest and. That, that was their sole job. We don't have that here. So we would outsource it. We could outsource it and through that method, make it happen. Okay. 
Somewhat of a related question, V, and this is really going back into time with a marketing partnership model, which the private corporate sector paid, and, and they could be promoted by the municipality and receive the value of that promotion through uh, the funds and the programs that and resources that the municipality could generate for tourism partners. Is there a way a fee structure could identify that challenge? Sorry, I'm not following the model. Explain to me again what, what you're thinking. Uh, yeah, we used to have a marketing partnership where every year companies oh, yeah. that wanted yeah, yeah. to be promoted, cross-promoted within the Norfolk County uh, resources, whether or not it was, it could be under Project Microphone, it could be under your experience guide on your website. Right. They paid right. one annual fee and this way they received all that resource and promotional benefit. I'm wondering if somehow that model could address the challenges that you have encountered regarding the private sector being involved in Project Microphone. Well, in that model, we had marketing partners that paid us yeah. $300 per year to participate. Yeah. Here, the, the challenge is Norfolk County using public dollars to, to basically support a for-profit entity. With, with with dollars, right? Or anything of, of value that isn't also available to every other business. So I could do, you know, a, a marketing campaign that calls out, um, you know, a, a, a private business and that business is obviously getting value out of that. But mm -hmm. as long as that same marketing campaign is also available to any other business that wants to participate, that's yeah. not bonusing. The, the, the minute it becomes bonusing is when I say, mm -hmm. Hey, you event organizer are, you know, putting on a show. I want to sponsor you with $25,000 because I think it'll be good for Norfolk because you'll do a better show. That I can't do. Even though it makes sense, the show will be better. Norfolk will get more tourists. That can't ha happen because the business also benefits per se at the expense of another business using public dollars. So, so technically, you're able to give the money to a nonprofit who can then give it to a for-profit. Yeah, no, can't do that either. Technically, uh, some communities have done that. Some communities have done that, but technically, the 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 provisions are very clear that no, it, you can't just put in a middleman that then does it. Really, oh, we. God, I totally don't want your job. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I, when I first learned, when I moved from consulting into economic development, I learned about this, and it, it floored me. Over time, uh, people have slowly chipped away trying to explain why this makes sense. And here's the rationale. The rationale is the province and in most ca Canadian um, um, provinces did not want public dollars being used as incentives to attract businesses that would then compete with other municipalities. So basically, I would use your tax dollars to attract a business that may or may not provide a return on investment. What they didn't want was what is happening in America, where you have like the state of Wisconsin offering, you know, a tech manufacturing company $1.4 billion over five years to set up a plant in Wisconsin. That tax revenue that that company will pay will never ever provide a return on that 1.4 billion. They they wanted to avoid that. They wanted to avoid Haldeman and Norfolk both using tax dollars to go after the same company to attract them. That was the genesis of it. And then over time it bled into everything. You know, except for there is an exception. If you create something called a community improvement plan, which we have one, which basically allows you to provide grants for things like uh, building facade improvements, new signage, um, you know, application fee waivers. That we can do if it's part of the community improvement plan, which is part of uh, the, the planning act and gets reviewed by the province before it's approved. Do you foresee a way to build a bridge to engage all tourism operators in Project Microphone? 
or is it just for the non-for-profit moving forward, this recommendation to defer until 2023? No, my recommendation to defer to 2023 is to reevaluate the models yeah, and look okay. at what can we do? What are yeah. our options? Can we dig, dig the, the original model that we had, which is working with the venue partners only, yeah. uh, sorry, non-for-profit venue partners only is no longer a viable model. So we want to yeah. look at other models. So that's one of the rationale for moving into 2023, but by no means the only rationale. It's the 10 year anniversary. COVID will be hopefully you know, in, a, in in the rear view mirror by that point. There's a bunch of reasons why 2023 makes a lot of sense and has can have, uh, you know, massive impact if if it, it goes ahead and gains council's approval. Jerry. I have one more question. Yeah. Um, so back to this funding and the loss of funding if uh, the council decides to take the money back. Is it possible you can use the funding this year to do prep work for a even better event next year? Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. In fact, I mean, this is getting into to nuances, but we were going to ask for a small amount of funding that can be used this year to hold performers for next year, because a lot of the performers want deposits. So if we roll everything over into 2023, we're going to find ourselves in, in January just starting to work on it, whereas I'd like to work on it this year so yeah. that I could do a spectacular 2024. So so yeah, it's a very valid uh, point that you've raised, um, but ultimately everything is up to council. I, I assume council will ask a lot of questions and will will reach their determination one way or another, but uh, anything is, is possible with this funding uh, and, and comes out of the council initiatives reserve. And so therefore it can go back, but also council can, can you know, slice and dice it however they see fit. Michael? Muted. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, for you, Madam Chair, to Z. Um, was there any additional funding towards staff regarding Project Microphone, or is it solely on you? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> so uh, yes, there, there we uh, did allocate uh, a, a small portion of funding for a part-time resource for Project Microphone. Um, but since it's not going forward, we had a, a resource for a very, very short amount of time that uh, we lumped with some other funding from a different project, the Brink project. Um, very short. When we realized that Project Microphone was not likely going to work out when we were started hearing back from the venue partners we uh decided not to uh continue not to repost that position and then my second question was like if let's say norfolk county fair was the nonprofit chosen to host the event does that money go directly back to um, norfolk county fair or is it split between numerous um non-for-profit agencies or how does that work uh sorry ask that again if if the funding what like if the funding, if if Norfolk County Fair was the nonprofit agency or whoever chosen for this event to host it, does that money go back to Norfolk County Fair or is it split between numerous non-for-profit agencies or? Yeah, so the idea was that we would have multiple events throughout the year and we would have events at the fair, at, at Old Town Hall, at Lighthouse Theater, uh, those were the the non for profit partners, and that was the original model. So the the fair would get a portion of that, uh, depending on what it is they felt they they needed at the time. Right. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks. Sure. So, any other comments from TDAV on the twenty twenty three idea? So are you looking for a formal recommendation? There, there have been some discussions to recognize the importance of the private sector that operate within within tourism. And, and that diversity piece is so important, right? It is like a hot potato. And, uh, and, and this is such a great resource. Um, are you looking for a formal motion at this point? Would this be helpful for you in uh, delaying this? 
Uh, yeah, Madam Chair, entirely up to obviously the the, the, yeah. the board, but yeah. uh, if there were a motion in support of Project Microphone being rolled over into 2023, I would include that in the staff report under yes. the consultation section. Yeah, Helene? Um, so uh, just specifically because of the mention of the gentleman of the road, which I'm going to assume is the, that was the Mumford and Sons giant right. Enormous thing, right? right. Um, are is is the hope that by pushing to 2023, you'll be able to bring in an you know something of that scope that will have that level of kind of notoriety to bring in that scale of people? Um, no, I mean <laughs> eventually maybe, but that event was closer. My understanding. To, to a five to $10 million event with a large part of that paid for by the band because they really wanted to do it here. So so we could do some something spectacular for, for Norfolk but and, and link it to GOTR, but not at that scale. It's not gonna be, you know, downtown Simcoe is closed, but that doesn't mean that we don't work our way towards that, right? We, we have to start somewhere and I think by going big on year one, which is 2023, we get bigger sponsors in 2024, and then we can keep scaling that until we do actually get to a point where we can do some like legitimately larger shows with uh, with with you know well known bands. I, uh, I guess my sorry, I'm not good at this. Not interrupting. That's okay. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess it's because you like again you said kind of if we go big in 2023 so I guess that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around is what's so big? what's big because if it's not like big like that was big what is big yeah for the that, context of what you're saying yeah we had all of the sizes in the original staff report all the way from some more intimate type of shows with you know 200 or so people to medium sized shows to to the larger. I think the largest shows we're looking at somewhere in the five to ten thousand person range. So I'm wondering, there's a lot of engagement here. Um, could we move forward with a motion to support the recommendation that TDAM uh, is uh, re is in support of uh, deferring Project Microphone until 2023, and perhaps with the recommendation that Svi, as he had indicated is examining ways to invite and have the diverse tourism uh, partners and community involved. And, and that, that, that just, it's more inclusive with everyone. How does everyone feel about that? I see, saw Michael's hand up first and then followed by Chantel. So Michael, then Chantel. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. for you, Madam Chair. The only thing further I could see with the motion, I don't know if it would be helpful for um, yeah. the, is um, maybe putting to council to defer the funding as well. Um, if we're afraid of losing the funding, I don't know if it would be particularly helpful okay. to include, include that. Include yeah. the funding. Yes, good point. Yeah. Can, you, can you just repeat that, that, that element again, so you include in the draft motion on drafting? Yes, I, no, it just, the V mentioned that uh, um, in particularly to the county that they, um, basically we could lose the funding for 2022, move it forward to 2023. Don't take the funding back. <laughs> yeah, long story short, don't take the money. <laughs> I think Defer the approved funding for the yeah. project in yeah. 2023. Um, any other comments, Michael? Because I know we have Chantel who'd like to weigh in. Nope, that was that was the only thing I saw from the motion. Good so point. Excellent point. Thank you. Chantel? Um, I just have a question before we vote. Do I need to abstain from voting since my employer is one of the nonprofits involved here? <laughs> <laughs> Through you, Madam I Chair. could be. So uh, I don't know much of your relationship with your employer and in relation to this specific project. Um, maybe you can just speak a little bit further with that. I'm employed by the Norfolk County Fair. Okay. Yeah. But if they're still they could they're be not bit, involved anymore. But they could be a benefactor of the funding, but then so under under the um, Disclosure of Pecuniary Interest Act, I, we can't necessarily tell you if you have to or don't have to. 
make a declaration, but if you'd like to, you can do so now and we're free from voting. I will so just like to do that? not to yeah. jeopardize anything. Yeah, we'll capture that on record. Thank you, Chantel. Yeah. Okay, we're crafting a motion and Helene. Uh, the only thing I was going to say was uh, to just because I know as he was saying he'd like to use some of the funding possibly this year to secure acts for next year. Yeah. So just whatever our recommendation is doesn't necessarily lock it down to the funding gets completely shoved to next year and now he's not allowed to use it till 2023 anymore. I don't know if this overcomplicates the motion. Okay, no, Sve. I think what will happen is we'll write our staff report and we'll have our recommendation yeah. in there, which is roll over the funds into 2023, uh, except for a certain amount that we'd like to keep back in 2022 for those purposes. And then if there's a motion that says, you know, TDAB supports uh, the, the project microphone launching in 2023 with funding from 2022 being rolled over into 2023. Um, that's fine because what you're doing is providing support for, for the idea. You don't need to get into the, the nuances of like, well, we want to keep 10,000 here and, you know, 20,000 in, in, in that pot, right? You, you're, the concept is what you're supporting, which is take the money that didn't get used this year and roll over and into 2023. And then my staff report will provide the small nuance of, well, let's take a small portion of that and actually keep it in 2022 um, because it just makes sense to start booking now rather than waiting till 2023. Perfect. These are such good comments, caring, coming from the best place. Michael? The only other suggestion I have, and maybe I'm just being um, too greedy, but could we not recommend that? this funding be put over in potentially anything in addition to next year? Like, I mean, if Project Microphone was going to be an ongoing basis, would they not have set aside money potentially for next year? So we could recommend that. that that's yeah. essentially right, Michael. So Project yeah. Microphone was put forward as or was approved as a three year uh, mm -hmm. project. What we're saying is let's take year one and year two and bundle them up. So we have yeah. double, double the funding in year one. And that way we can do a bigger year one, right? We, we come out with a bang, uh, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. So I, th I, think we, I think we have the air. Oh, sorry, Michael. Go ahead. Yeah, I just don't want to see us restrict ourselves into saying we just want to put 2022 over to 2023. And then yeah. basically us, we could be shooting ourselves in the foot by not getting 2023's allotment of monies allocated towards project microphone. Excellent feedback. Uh, so Aaron is crafting the motion now, which includes the kitchen sink. And uh, so. So um, the board is, of course, happy to help me modify this, but effectively through you, Madam Chair, is yeah. that. That the board supports staff's recommendation that the county not proceed with the 2022 project microphone program and instead focus on the 2023 launch of funds care and funds carry over. And I think that covers the umbrella of points that were discussed. Um, and I think, Speed, you, you'd indicated really that's all you need is. Uh, that's all I need. Yeah, yeah, yeah this, the rest is implied under that. So we're looking for someone to move that motion other than Chantel, who has removed herself. Helene, seconded by Jerry. All in favor? Carrie. Fantastic. And Chantel had abstained, so thank you. Great. And so, really quickly, the second staff report. Can everyone still see this staff report slide? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Really quickly, the second staff report it will basically be a report um, asking council to uh, extend the patio program offset that we started under the economic recovery plan for 2021 for any patio that has uh, an encroachment. So some patios are on private land. Some patios want to use, you know, uh, part of the sidewalk or part of the parking, and so they have an encroachment, basically a rental cost. Um, in 2021, we offset that rental cost through the funds that we had in the, our economic recovery plan because we were trying to help restaurants recover. We wanted them to have patios and we didn't want them to, you know, not have a patio because of the cost of leasing. Um, but we didn't think it would still be here in 2022, but here we are. 
So, um, you know, I, it was still here this year. Uh, restaurants are still kind of teetering. So my recommendation will be to extend that offset, that lease cost offset for 2022. It's not a big ticket item. It's like I expect it to be under $1,000 in total. So, um, you know, as, if, if there's any comments, happy to discuss, but it's a pretty simple one. Any comments? Good. Accepted. Yeah. Excellent. And then the last one is oh, Year of the Garden. So we have been working on Year of the Garden. Here's what is underway and what we've done so far. So we've added the Year of the Garden logo to our tourism website. We have created a Year of the Garden event and activities form, which is based on the national Year of the Garden event and activities form. We modeled our form on their form. It's now hosted on that link that you see there. Um, that form will be and has been promoted via social media as well as our newsletter. We're going to keep promoting it. We're going to use the hashtag, a common hashtag to keep promoting it, which comms has kind of figured out. Um, and then that, that collect information will be added to Visit Norfolk and our calendar, as well as promoted via social media. Uh, the Visit Norfolk link will be promoted via social media, which will include the calendar. The, the form also, we added a checkbox that gives staff permission to share the event with the Canadian Garden Council. So the Canadian Garden Council asked us, any events that are happening in Norfolk, please also add them to the national calendar. So we've got a little checkbox there that says, can we also promote your event to the national calendar? And so we'll do that for those that approve. Uh, we've ordered um, Year of the Garden pins, which are will be made available to anyone who's actually doing something, engaging in a way, activating, doing an event, doing an activity. So they will be rare. They will be pins that we will give out to anyone who actually you know fills in a form and, and does something so it'll be almost like a memento to for for people who participated to look back on uh we've uh, so that's the pins uh, common hashtag which i've talked about um i've spoken with heritage and culture and they will be incorporating a garden day into their summer program and their camps so there's also a potential fit there with the Delhi Museum between the Delhi Museum and the Delhi District Horticultural Society and they look after the gardens there and so they're looking at planting stuff together and kind of putting photos of that up on uh, on social media with the hashtag but also the kids will be involved from the day camps so it'll be a good story um, and finally, we have uh, created a draft video that's uh, almost ready to go. We're just waiting for some minor changes there to links and stuff that we will be able to, um, you know, putting up a form is one thing. Putting up a video is better to say, hey, are you planning on doing something? Check out this form. We'd love to promote your event. So the, the video is, uh, is uh, Stevens. I think last time he showed you guys a draft and now it's like way improved. So. There it is. That is all. Svi, I have one additional update, which is a follow-up from last month's meeting where Councillor Martin had recommended the Norfolk County Public Library be contacted, and she facilitated uh, an email introduction. So I did uh, have a virtual meeting uh, with their team, and uh, they are very enthusiastic about incorporating the Year of the Garden into uh their their annual calendar so excellent good. yeah good good yeah helene um uh, Zvi, have you not mentioned us getting to see videos of the ads that you've oh, done yeah 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 yeah. i did i sure did okay really quickly oh. so they are um these are the still ads the videos are coming these are the still ads that are point of entry and um uh, uh, point of entry and the programmatic ads are what we are starting with. We'll also have Spotify. Anyway, it'll be a big campaign and I'll show those as, as they come out. But here are the first ads. We'll have a bunch, but uh, this one. So find your folk will be on every ad. We're using different colors for the Norfolk logo so that it stands out. 
This one is take flight. Obviously, this is the adventure part of our campaign. Ride and shine, uh, which is more like the active, you know, adrenaline piece, but also ride and shine. Can be like more of a chill ride. There's a there's a ride that um, uh, starts uh, every year in like I think London or or even maybe even further and ends here in in uh, Port Dover. So uh, find your folk. And this one, uh, get a million miles away in less than a couple of hours. So this one is to attract markets of our segment or segments of our market that don't know about Norfolk County. They have no idea of what Norfolk is or how close it is or what they can find. So we're trying to create that emotional response of like you see palm trees in in Ontario, especially you know for next year as we are in the winter, people will look back at these and and think of palm trees and where they would want to go and that they don't have to go to Florida for palm trees. Glam amazing. So experience luxury under the stars. Uh, this is more of our glamping outdoors uh, eco adventures type theme. Uh, million star accommodations. Again, luxury under the stars. Uh, wind down. So this this will these will all link to our um, landing page. We have two landing pages, one for find your folk, one for close to home, far from ordinary. But we're starting to find your folk. So uh, each of these have a call to action on the bottom, which is find award winning breweries and wineries or wineries and breweries. And it will link to um, this page. So this is our landing page. It's not the most beautiful thing ever, but it'll help us measure impact and who's coming. Are they downloading the app, et cetera? So this is the landing page. This one is explore.norfolktourism.ca. It's separate from our main tourism website so that we can count the visitation separately. Um, there's a description. Uh, I have to change this. I have to actually describe what find your folk means. And then um, we've chosen you know, eight things under each category that we want to promote under adventure, under camping, under nature, under culture and heritage, shopping, wine, cider, beer, farm markets, trails, parks, and golf, and we can add more. And then I put the passport here. I mentioned the culinary passport. Um, so I put the passport here. So if somebody wants to learn about dining options in Norfolk, they can download the passport and that will take them to 15 restaurants as well. And then finally on the bottom here, we promote our, our app and downloading the app for, for planning your trip and then how to get here. And this was actually sponsored. The whole campaign uh, development was sponsored by, um, uh, in part by SWATSI, the regional uh, tourism organization. So uh, we, it only cost us half of what it would have cost us. So I'm pretty excited. And this will go out, uh, start going out this month, maybe even this week. And uh, then we'll start, like I said, videos, video ads, uh, short videos, long videos, um, Spotify audio ads, um, social media, um, sponsored content, which is like a story on nationalpost.com about why come to Norfolk County uh, and, and a bunch of other things. So it's a pretty extensive campaign. I love it. <laughs> So are we, all are we all feeling good? Yeah, yeah good. very energizing. And to see all those beautiful images that, I mean, the season is just starting. So um, congratulations, B, and uh, on, on the effort. That is a tremendous uh, piece of uh, body of work and many layers to it. Um, I don't know any other comments here before we move a motion to accept. I think you have everything you need regarding feedback from TDAP. I, I do, and I just want to. Chris hasn't spoken a lot in this meeting, but I do want to say that uh, uh, you know none of this would be possible if I didn't have Chris by my side, uh, working through all of this. Uh, I don't. I you know it's I, I do the presentations. But our work is split 50-50, so I just uh, I just wanted to give him a shout out as well. Good job, Chris. Yeah. yeah the good strong, job, the yeah. strong silent type. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> it's a team. It's a team. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I think I think we should also acknowledge uh, Chris in in this motion as well. And uh, we know that uh, Svi Lifshitz, uh, Director of uh, Strategic Innovation and Economic Development, and also on behalf of the work of uh, Chris Garwood. And Chris, what is your title? <laughs> Anything will work. Anything. <laughs> also in the superhero series, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that we accept so your <laughs> we accept your economic development projects report. Uh, it is received as, as information. So we'll need someone to move that motion forward. Uh, Sarah, seconded by Michael. All in favor? Carried. Thank you. So here we are at the finish line. We're at number eight correspondence. Unless we have any, Aaron, not seeing anything, that brings us to number nine, other business. Um, anyone at the table regarding other business? Not at all. Uh, that brings us to number 10, closed session. No closed session, but then again, as a part of our parliamentary procedures, we are on that agenda item and bringing us to number 11. Next meeting, and uh, before we move our motion to close, we have that date scheduled for June the 15th, 2022 at 5 p.m. Uh, we are anticipating to still carry this hybrid in-person model. Aaron? So through you, Madam yep. Chair, um, the county is fully open at this point, so yep. we're very thankful for that we're at this part of the pandemic. Yeah. For those members who are comfortable and interested, you are of course welcome to attend in person. I think this went really quite well. And of course, we're going to be doing the hybrid model on a going basis. So if you'd like to come virtually, as many have chosen to, you are welcome to do that also. I just ask you to let me know that I can sort of prepare accordingly the room and whatnot. So, but if you change your mind, just it's a problem. Just, just join. Okay, and and I don't know uh, if there could be consideration on occasion. We have thought about different locations. Um, I know that Michelle from Cranberry Creek, she had offered her location. Uh, our 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 business, Whistling Gardens, we were peak peak peony time. Um, so I don't know if a meeting in the gardens would be too stressful for you. All well, that bird serenade and and beautiful floral bouquet, but. Um, so maybe we can have further conversation about that. And uh, yeah, thank you everyone for your time. Uh, to conclude, we're looking at a motion to adjourn the meeting. And what is the time? 7.27. 7.27, okay. And who would like to move that motion? Jerry, okay, seconded by Michael. Thank you, all in favor to uh, close the meeting, adjourned. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Uh, Brandon, we appreciate uh, your value as well. And uh